with most people that I uh, have on the savings single call, I usually request uh, a bio, a form of bio or whatnot. Um, but one thing, one reason I'm so excited about uh, tonight's call, this is one of my, my, my dear college friends, um, and it's been a long time since I came through undergrad. <laughs> so, uh, but when uh, I went to a community college, and I'm, I'm building up to my intro. It might seem like I'm taking some time, but uh, I went to a community college in my hometown, and God uh, uh, led me uh, to to, Al- to transfer to Alabama State University. And when I went there the first semester, uh, I really really hated it just to be quite honest with you and my you know academically I did well you know was on the dean's list or whatnot but uh socially it was my first time living away from home you know I I lived in an apartment didn't know anybody I mean just you know and for those of you who went off to college you know if you try to live safe and meeting safe people in college is not the easiest thing you know unless maybe you had a Christian school but Oh, uh, um, but uh, I even went to another school, uh, tried to transfer, things just didn't work out, whatnot. So I was like, well, I'm going to try this thing one more time. And um, that was spring of 2000. And uh, that January, uh, God led me to a, a host of, 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 of on-fire uh, college students that was on fire for the Lord. And one of them happened to be our guest speaker tonight. Uh, so it's Andrew LaFleur, and um, we we had some good times. I mean, we we church. We we had uh, went to. We probably ran all of the the campus ministries there, uh, or, or 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 spoke or, or sung or participated in some form of fashion. But this sister is an on fire sister for the Lord. Uh, her and really a whole entire family is like. They're almost like brothers and sisters, and we, we talk from time to time, Facebook friends, and I, I know all of her family. Uh, and, of course, she knows we ask about each other's families and whatnot. So this is a, a woman of God, and I've just had opportunity just to see her grow. She is uh, a graduate of Alabama State University. Uh, she is working in, in the social work field. Uh, always had a heart for mission. Uh, ministry, rather. Um, I always call her Missionary Junior because her mother is also a missionary um, because she's just done so much. Uh, Sunday school, uh, choir directing. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole lot of things that she's done that I, I don't even know about because she's a very humble sister in the Lord. And um, tonight, as you might have seen on the Twitter page, on the uh uh, Facebook page or on the website or on the call, however you got it. Uh, tonight's topic is having discernment with online dating. And, again, it's presented by none other than my friend, Andrea LaFleur from Birmingham, Alabama. So with no further ado, I'm just going to turn it on over to you. Uh, so, Sister Andrea, take it away. Okay, first give an honor to God, who is definitely the head of my life. I thank God for my friend, my brother, Robert Mac Williams. Also, um, giving honor to my own pastor, uh, Pastor Cecil Mine Webster of the Tower Prayer Church in Leeds, Alabama, where God is truly transforming lives. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, um, you know, just, you know, piggybacking off of what my brother and friend and Lord Rob has said, you know, we've known each other for a long time. <laughs> We even briefly spoke before we started uh, this conference call. And it's been 17 years. Wow. So God has definitely, definitely has blessed our friendship. I mean, there's not a time that he's in Birmingham or, you know, even if he was in Montgomery, he's going to stop by. <laughs> he's, he'll call me, Sister Andrea, just letting you know I'm in, you know, in Birmingham and I just, you know, wanted to speak to you and, you know, catch up with you. Even back in our college days, you know, it was nothing for us to go to a Friday night service. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, any time where it was, you know, where where Jesus was, whether if it was where he was worshiping at that time or even at my home church in Montgomery, being a church of God, 
it was nothing for us to stop by each other's churches, go visit other right. churches, and it, it just it it brought us as friends closer together. It built us up as believers, and I truly, truly do not take it for granted of being a friend, definitely a friend of Robert McWilliams. But right. uh, long story, uh, long story short, um, Rob, you know, brother Robbie had already uh, stated, you know, of course, you know, graduated from Alabama State University, had various uh, positions as far as my career, um, worked with at-risk youth, worked with children, uh, worked with adult men, children with autism spectrum disorders, and present day. I'm a social worker. I work with uh, adults who have diagnosis of not only mental illness but HIV status as well. Um, I've always been an advocate for mental health, um, especially now. I did, you know, just looking at what we deal with in the body of Christ, and I definitely advocate for the saints who are dealing with mental health issues. So enough being said about me. Um, the t- uh, today's topic. Um, online dating and having discernment, oh, my gosh. What brought this topic to my mind and, you know, really wanted to bring to the people is what I read on Facebook. <laughs> it was a post from ChristianMingle.com. I know there's various, various social uh, dating sites on um, dating sites today where, you know, from Christian Mingle to eHarmony, BlackPeopleMeet.com, Tender, plenty of fish. The list goes on and on and on. But, you know, it just basically, you know, if it's whatever your desire is or where you're trying to, you know, meet according to what your needs are, there's pretty much an online dating site for that. <laughs> so um, just re- going back and reading what I saw the post, it's, this is a woman, she said, and this is from a post from um, ChristianMingle.com, and this woman states, and I'm going to read it because uh, I took a screenshot of it. It says, I met my ex-husband on here, and what a charmer. Lost my house, my car. My car was repo, rather. Um, had to move all my belongings into storage and move in with my mother, and my son was young. He ended up being a scam artist our whole marriage, married to a other, another woman while addicted on drugs and alcohol. Nine years later, I'm just now getting my life back and my credit restored. Never again. These sites are very dangerous and damaged. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's a lot. Yeah, that, it, it, that was like, whoa. When I first read this, and actually I was on the phone with uh, Brother Rob, I said, this is just devilment. <laughs> this, is, this is off the chain. I said, we got, I said, Rob, I said, we got to talk about this. <laughs> I said, can, can we talk about this? And he was just like, yeah, that's something that definitely, you know, you could bring to the forefront. So I'm going uh, to open up with some discussion questions um, yeah. from – what I just read from the previous post, I mean, how do you feel about that? Anybody can answer that question. How do you feel about just what that post had said? Anybody? Go ahead and repeat that once, once again. I, I missed that, uh, Suzanne. I was just asking, you know, how did anybody feel about the post that I just read from, uh, uh, from Facebook, from ChristianMingle.com? Hi, my name is um, my name is Sister Bridget. Um, I know Rob. I just so happen to see the conference call posted on the uh, on Facebook. But um, I do want to um, comment on that what you just said. You know, it, it's a difference um, with being in church, part of the church, than going to a church. And mm-hmm. I feel like whether it's a dating site or whether it's somebody you meet out in the street, which that's, you know, it was tragic news what I just heard, what you just stated, what that lady said. But I feel like that's why it's really important to really be in a place, you know, not, you know, people may say, you know, oh, well, I'm, I'm saved, but I'm to my truly Holy Ghost field because the Lord will give you discernment about anybody that he wants mm-hmm. to, even warn you, even when somebody may seem like they're okay, and you may say, well, okay, this person seems like they're fine. I don't have an issue. But the Lord will reveal the heart and the intent of the heart and let you know how the future will be. 
And I think even, you know, and I understand how, you know, being single, being single myself for so <laughs> for a very long time, you can get desperate. And you can, you know, you can resort to sites like that. Say, okay, well, I just want to meet some friends and different things like that. But I feel like it's very important, um, you know, to listen to what the Lord is telling you in your spirit. And he will mm-hmm. warn you. You know, I remember, because mm-hmm. um, I have, you know, experienced a site before, or more than one site. And I remember that I didn't even talk to this guy. Never thought about, I don't even think we even reached out, but the Lord let me know what type of spirit that person had. It wasn't even no need it. to reach out. So God is just, mm-hmm. if, if you got the spirit of God, and I really encourage, you know, people to not just go to a church and be part of the church. The Lord will warn you not just about, a, you know, people on the site, but just warn you about, you know, meeting God, people. you know, mm-hmm. just people, exactly. Amen. That's, that's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Because, you know, you know, really that was the gist of what I'm going to bring to you today is that, you know, we we got to stay prayerful. We have to stay, you know, stay prayerful. And uh, and then my next question would be: Do you believe that these web websites such as eHarmony, BlackPeopleMeet dot com, Tinder, Plenty of Fish can uh, can they be deceptive? And if so, how? Uh, yes, I Anybody? think they deceptive, um, just like any website, Facebook. Can be deceptive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Instagram mm-hmm. is deceptive because we post the the best part of us, pieces of us. Um, mm-hmm. We post what we want people to know about us, um, and so yes, they definitely can be deceptive. And I think that's why we have to be all the more cautious um, and put not only on our, our you know, <laughs> be spiritual about it, but our analytical. Um, about it as well, um, because there are some artists there. You know, people. You have the artists that some artists that grammar is incorrect, right? That's kind of like the number one thing. <laughs> it's like okay, these words don't go together. <laughs> it doesn't look right. Yeah. So, so, we so have I'm to with you on that one. Extremely cautious. You know, people asking for money or your information, you know, mm-hmm. uh, very quickly. And it's like, I'm sorry, I don't know you, you know. So, yes, they can be very receptive. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's definitely, I believe, you know, maybe like uh, Sister previously had said, she was saying that, you know, having, you know, being Holy Ghost filled and understanding that, you know, if you have the Spirit of God in you that, He'll give you discernment of the spirits that may try to, you know, attack you through people. And um, as you know, as believers, we should also be mindful of what our job is, as well as understand what the devil, uh, what the devil's job is. Saint John ten ten is a very familiar scripture. It says that the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said that I come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. Even in Luke, was uh, Luke twenty two and thirty one, it says, "Simon, Simon, behold, the devil desires to sift you as wheat. But I pray for thee that your faith fail is not, and that thou be converted and strengthen thine brethren." I brought those two scriptures to you because even though, like, when we are, you know, in our singleness, because I'm single too, is that. You know, of course, you know, it's just like we said, well, Lord, when is it our time? Or, you know, asking questions about, you know, about certain people. But the enemy is like, oh, okay, this is a weak area in her life. So let me see what I could throw at her or throw at, you know, let me see what this person, you know, what can I do in this situation? Even as believers, the enemy comes at us harder because we profess Christ. The enemy comes at us in various ways, whether it's through our job, family members, coworkers, through other believers, even in our relationships. There are some areas in which the devil knows how to attack us in our relationships. This can come in various forms, whether it's, you know, how the enemy can come at us. It's just like, well, you're getting up in age. I can testify. I'm 36 years old. I've never been married, nor do I have any children. So even I've had coworkers to come up to me and, you know, and I laugh at this one because it's hilarious. 
I've had folks who come up, you know, coworkers who come up to me and say, well, Andre, you getting up there when you don't have children. Mind you, not when are you going to get married. When are you going to have children? <laughs> so you can just see where our world, the where the world is going through, you know, is saying, it's just like, well, after a certain age, not you should be married, but you should have children. And, you know, the, you know, I, it doesn't bother me anymore because it's just more of that I know within myself that God is preparing me for that mate. Not, okay, you know, I, I'm not knocking people who've had children out of wedlock, but on the same token, it's, you know, with me, it's just more of I had both of my parents in my life. I want to be married just like my parents were married when they had me. So please do not allow the enemy to trick you. God has a plan for us. Mark 11 and 24 says, Whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. And, you know, everybody has, a, you know, a desire in their heart of what God had, you know, what you desire in a mate. I mean, there's certain, you know, certain attributes. My biggest thing is he has to be a provider. <laughs> I mean, I understand that in our world today that there are two income, you know, households, and I understand that. And in addition to that, you know, um, of course, a lot of women are working, and I work myself. I'm a social worker. But on the same token, I do believe that a man should be the main provider in the household. Now, let's uh, go to another scripture. This is Matthew 26 and 41. This is going back to the online day. It says, watch as well as pray, that you may enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Of course, many of us may or may not admit to having shortcomings when it comes to discernment of spirit. Everyone does not have your best interest at heart. Really, through all aspects of life, we should be praying for wisdom and discernment. Wisdom. With, uh, in Philippians 1 and 19 from the message version states that it states that we should learn hold on it says that in the message version that it says that my prayer is this that you should love you said that you love to flourish and that you will not only love much well but learn to to use your head and test your feelings that your love is sincere and intelligent, not sentimental and and gush. So in other words, it's saying that test what you feel. That's the discernment part. Test what you feel. Because at times we're just like, you know, so caught up in emotion of a certain situation and not really, you know, looking at, the person in the whole perspective because even like I have two sisters and at times even when I've dated other people, they'll say, well, Andre, you might not want to date that person because there's something about him. I just really, you know, I, you know, I, I, there's something about him. And sure enough, it'll, it'll Rob, and I know you could, uh, Brother Rob, I know you could this for this one. It's Jennifer who I always say, hey, Andre, you might want to not date this person. <laughs> because uh, I know you, you could probably say, yeah, Jennifer would be the one to tell you that. <laughs> but it's good to have that other person because even though that you might not be seeing at that time who, you know, what's going on, but it's always, you know, God has always brought somebody in to say, hey, Andrea, this is not what you want. Even though I might not not be looking, but God has always looked out for me. It might be through another friend, through one of my siblings to say, hey, he's not it. Move on. Or even I'll be the one to say, hey, bro, you, this this is it. You know, this is too much. <laughs> this is time to go on. Getting back to online dating. Of course, technology is everywhere. You know, even if you look at churches now, it's, you know, it's more technology in church, let's say, now than it was even 10 years ago. I mean, you you could even watch your uh, – I know at our church, at Tower Prayer Church, if you miss service, you could catch it either on Facebook Live 
or even through our website, you know, and it's, you know, on, you know, online through our website. If you're, you know, not at home and you're missing services. So technology is everywhere. So, I mean, we got our smartphones now. We have our tablets, even smart watches. And, you know, a lot of things, you know, a lot of these apps are for us to, you know, stay connected with friends and family. But regardless of, you know, all of these sites that we have, it's just, again, you know, it's used to, a lot of these sites are specific to what you're looking for. And, again, you know, I'll say this disclaimer right now is just like, I'm not telling anybody that online dating is wrong. Because even when I first, I lived in Montgomery almost all my life. But I moved from Montgomery to Birmingham from uh, in 2011. And um, it was really because I had a sibling who um, was very ill, and I moved up here just to, you know, help, you know, pay the bills in the house. So, of course, you know, I, you know, of course, if anybody knows me, well, Rob knows me, Brother Robert knows me personally, is that, yes, I'm a part of a sorority. And I have my sorority sisters up here, but, you know, it's hard to catch certain ones. But as far as, you know, having friends up here, it, it took a while. So, um, Hello, even, so knowing the dating site, you know, as far as dating, you know, of course, I didn't know too many people, you know, people in Birmingham except people that I graduated, you know, that went to school with as far as Alabama State. So a lot of them were either married or, had, you know, or their lives were busy. So, of course, you know, one, you know, a coworker had suggested that, hey, won't you look at a dating site? I just came to the conclusion it was not for me. <laughs> so I just said, you know what, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I met, maybe a couple of people, but after, like, the third one, I was just like, you know what? Nah, this is all right. So it was just more of with certain things where, you know, I like to talk to people. And I think that's where a lot of, you know, where we just not as a society has gotten away from because you have technology all around us. I mean, some people rather text than talk. That gets on my nerves real bad because I'm just like, no, I'm, I, I'm a, you know, I can communicate, but as far as writing, but as far as texting, I can't really, you know, uh, how can I say it, really communicate exactly how I'm feeling at that moment or what I need from you at that moment. Really, to me, texting is more saying it's more for short messages, not um, long, drawn-out messages of, uh, why didn't you show up? Or you know, it's, it's, to me, it's not for that. But moving right along, um, with these dating sites, of course, you can create a profile. You know, even from Facebook to regular social media sites, you know, you create your f profile from Facebook, Twitter, um, what is it? Uh, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, Snapchat. A lot of these, you know, sites. Of course, you have to create a profile. And including, of course, with all these dating sites as well, you know, you create a profile. And with these profiles, you could be whoever you want to be. I mean, it could be a person that created a profile. Let's say he's in, the, you know, he's a, he says that he's a medical doctor, but in all actuality, he might be a CNA. I mean, anybody could be anybody on these dating websites. I mean, People can say that they're a model in all actuality, they're a janitor. Or a lot of these people, you know, they're not, they're being deceptive, a lot of them, of who they are. And it's not just like the secular sites like blackpeoplemeet.com or Plenty of Fish or Tinder. Even some of these Christian sites, as when I had read before the post that I had posted before. So that's why, you know, even again, I say being watchful being prayerful about, you know, what we do on the, you know, the people that we meet on these sites and just being careful because, you know, even like I said, what I previous, previously read before is just more of the devil is busy. So we have to be prayed up, fasted up in our word so that we won't fall into these 
like the scripture says, diverse temptations. So um, during that time of singleness, we should be trusting God. And, you know, trusting God for a mate. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Of course, as believers in Christ, we want to honor God in all that we do. Most, most importantly, we should, it's, we should strike interest. When people strike interest in us, we should be asking questions. If anybody, like I said, Rob knows me. If anybody, <laughs> Rob knows me, I'm going to ask a thousand and one questions in any setting that I'm in. I mean, we uh, at my um, current job, we had a professional development. And, you know, people, you know, when I come to certain meetings, I'm just like, okay, so, what, you know, what are we doing this for? Okay, how does this affect my department? And how does this, you know, how can I implement this program through what I currently do, and people are looking at me like, okay, Andrea, you're talking too much. But on the same token, I'm trying to get a clear understanding. Even the scripture says, in all thy getting, get an understanding. So I think even, you know, I had mentioned this to Brother Rob before, was that, you know, a, a lot of times I hear, you know, it, it's all on Facebook, and I've heard other believers say it, you say you should date with a purpose. I'm not knocking that because you should. But on the same token, I believe where we miss it as believers is that we, when we're dating people, we get caught up in emotion. And that it's just like, oh, well, I believe that he's the one. I, you know, And I don't really believe that a lot of us are not seeking God the way that we should when it comes to looking for a mate. And especially us women, it's just like, well, he does this for me, he does that for me, and I just, you get caught up of what he's doing, but then get foggy, you know, your um, your judgment is foggy because of what he's doing for you, and not really, he's not really saying, okay, Lord, I need to be on my knees praying about this man, or praying about this woman, so. I'm just saying, you know, like I said, I don't. I again, I'm not. I'm not saying that online dating is wrong. This is not what this was about. But what this is mainly about is being watchful, being prayerful about, you know, who we are meeting online, staying on our knees, praying and asking God for discernment when meeting people. Period. I mean, because the devil is trying, you know, is really trying to get us out of line with the will of God. And even with certain people, I'm not even with certain relationships, I'm not saying like when it comes to dating, just relationships, period. Some you know, some even some friendships could call, could be draining. Where you have friends who are always asking you for favors but not trying to help you. And we have to be mindful of even that. Because there's some men, I mean I'm talking from a a woman's perspective, there's some men that don't believe in the, you know, they're not living the order of God even in the church because, you know, of course, the order is God, the husband, the wife, and and the family, and the children. And some men, they just feel as though they don't need to provide. And I'm against that. I'm sorry because that's the order of God is that the man is supposed to be the provider. And he said, you know, I can see if something happened to him, whether if he was sick or ill, that's something different. But if he's able-bodied and he ain't working, there's a severe problem. And there's some, and I would say this, and some of them are like that in the church that don't want to work, but then say they're saved. I have a problem with that. True, that's true. A, a, a severe problem. And I guess because of what I was presented with as a child and even now as an adult. As I, you know, me and Rob had this conversation, you know, beforehand that, you know, both of our parents have been married for several years. His parents have been married for several years. My parents have been married for 38 years. And, and you know, I looked at, you know, through the, you know, being a, a child, 
up and now to being an adult. That's what I want for myself. That's what I want for myself, to, you know, to be married and to stay married. Because some women, they'll pray and say, well, Lord, I want to be married. Okay. But where are the specifics? So we just have to be mindful even of what we pray when it comes to having a mate. So, like I said, going back to online dating, online dating can be something for someone who is moved to a new city or looking for someone more compatible than what they've been dating, you know, in the past. But understand prayer that we should always pray and have discernment. This includes online dating and otherwise. So that's all I have. <laughs> I, I truly thank God for this. I thank God for the opportunity. And I hope that I've imparted some type of thought processes or, you know, just really some thought and some empowerment when it comes to online dating. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much, Ms. Andrea. I certainly appreciate you for uh, does, does anyone out there have a site that they can recommend? <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I moved from a big town to a small town. There are no men in my church my age. <laughs> well, so, so I, I'm a and I, I'm, I, I was married for 25 years. I'm two years a widow. Mm-hmm. And I don't like living alone. <laughs> a, I mean, I understand that. I understand. I mean, I don't so, live alone. I have a different arrangement. <laughs> I would um, say pray about it. That's pl- well, I, mean, I have I have prayed about it, and that's why I'm asking. Is I I went to one quote apostolic singles site. Well, it was all women. There were no men on the site. <laughs> well. <laughs> no, you know we out. If you think about it, we do outnumber them. <laughs> we really do, especially in the body of Christ. We do outnumber them, and I, that's a hard question. I mean, I've tried like eHarmony, but it's just like I, my attention span with certain things are very short, and all of them questions. <laughs> and then when I start thinking, that's because see, I'm a very um. If any, you like brother, like. I'm a behavioralist also, so when I start noticing, like, the same questions being answered over and over again, that's when I say, you know what, uh-uh, <laughs> I'm done, so I, I well, guess the only thing. I, I did have a bad experience. I had this man request to be my friend. He was he seemed very interested. We talked for two weeks, and turned out he was wanting money out of me. Oh, see. So, some but uh, I, 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 I didn't, you know, I didn't, I never gave him my personal information. I just sort of avoided the question, and it's not on my Facebook. Because I I, was, I guess it was a nudge from the Holy Ghost to tell me to just hold back until I saw, you know, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I understand. But, that. Yeah. So uh, I, that was sort of a bad experience. And like I said, I have been to one ask, quote, apostolic single dating site, but there was no men <laughs> there my age either. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, but I, I've also, but I also have several friends that met their 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 mates online and didn't get married. I've, I've had, like I said, I have a couple of friends who are currently in relationships through online dating. Like I'm just saying, I, I don't know what I mean. I don't have no uh, no website that I would recommend. I mean, only one that I know of is Christian Mingle, and even when I tried it before, I put in what my specifics were because, you know, those way you know websites will you know say, well, what are you actually looking for? It was maybe one man that showed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest. I mean. <laughs> Well, I want somebody breathing. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I, I like. I think I'm, I'd make a great catch. I'm still young enough. I want to do things, and I'm, you know, and I don't want some. I don't want marry marry some guy that's going to sit on the couch and not want to go anywhere. I know that's right. 
I, I'm a good yeah. cook. I, I enjoy traveling. I enjoy. I have several hobbies. I enjoy talking to people. I think I'd be a great catch, but not if I can't find a man. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Yeah. If I may encourage, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. If I may encourage the one of guy, um, as I've been listening um, to you just then, um, I just want to encourage you. Uh, the word of God says, "Be uh, be not anxious." Uh, for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, mm-hmm. make your request known to God. Online yeah. beta mm-hmm. sites are just avenues in which God used, just like we go into a grocery store and, and a young man may catch our eye or, you know, uh, vice versa. It's just an avenue. And so even in the midst of what you're feeling right now, uh, God is sovereign. And even with him taking your husband uh, in transition, it was just to get you to a place so that he can speak to you. And so in this time, God's not saying that he will not allow you to experience that again, but in this moment, he just wants you to keep it before him. Don't get weary here. Don't get weary in your well-doing. Uh, be not dismayed. God is still God. And if he did it for your friends, if he did it for anybody else, he's able to do it for you. It's just that it's in his time, and we have to be confident and know that it's in God's time that it will happen, whether it's online, whether it's you walking into the grocery store in that small community. However God wants to bless it, it is going to happen. I just want you to be encouraged and know that God hasn't forgot about you. And even though you don't like living alone, I don't like living alone either, God is still God, and he's working it out for you to be encouraged. Oh, I, I definitely am encouraged. And uh, to tell you the truth, about oh, about a month ago now, I had a very vivid dream, and I usually do not remember my dreams. But in my dream, I met this guy. I still see his face. and He's going to be, I know how tall he was, what his face looks like, and he's going to be too shy to ask me out, and I'm going to have to ask him out. Now, this is from someone who never remembers her dreams. This is a very clear dream that I had, and I really believe that God has sent me a picture of who my husband's going to be. Wow. Well, just hold on to that. Just yeah, I am holding on. Because... I'm not believing. Yeah. I'm not discouraged. Mm-hmm. I am not discouraged. I was just asking him for, like I said, my husband's been dead. My husband's been dead for two years, and until recently, I hadn't even considered. But now I feel like if that's what's next for me. I'm I'm going to get married again. I was faithful to my first husband, and I will be faithful with us to my next one. And I'm not living in the past just grieving over my ex-husband all the time anymore. God is good. He can, He will provide. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. And, I, you know, like he, like we always say, I believe God. Because even like, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, there's been times even within myself, you know, moving to a new area, you know, and I'm like I said, I'm 36 now. So it's just more of once I got into myself of saying <laughs> you have to wait on God. <laughs> That's when I, was like, oh, okay. I, I didn't get married for the first me. time. I didn't get married for the first time until I was 39. I was 39. My husband was 42, and neither one of us had been married before. Wow. And we were married for 25 years. Mm-hmm. So praise God. But I'm just, you know, for me, it was just like, okay, you know. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was just more of, I wait on, you know, God, you, you really must have somebody awesome for me, and I'm yet wait, wait on him. I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I have a question for you. Um, You said you got married at 39. How did you, uh, were you saved prior to 39? Yes, I was. I'm fifth generation Pentecostal. Oh, I love it. I love it. So how did you deal with that? I mean, like, I'm sure, uh, you know, now it's kind of... I kept busy. I kept busy in the church, the house of God. Mm -hmm. I was an interpreter for the deaf, and I was a registered nurse, and I have, like I said, I have lots of hobbies. I just kept busy and did day by day in God. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Awesome. That's That's a beautiful testimony because a lot of times, I know it's more common, and even statistically speaking, 
singles now get married later than than early. You know, like my probably like mm-hmm. Andrea's parents. I'm not sure how old they were when they got married, but my parents, you know, they was like you know late teenagers when they got married. So and that was common for their generation. Um, yes, you know, that was mm-hmm. a normal thing. So and now like in I guess Andrea's generation and myself, all of us that's I guess twenties and thirties is. It's not uncommon for people to get married in their thirties or whatnot, or even later. But, no, yeah. later. Mm-hmm. but that, well, you had, even and you still get the social pressure. I mean, even when I was in, once I graduated, I don't know if Andrew can can testify this. Once I graduated, you know, at what twenty three or whatnot, and you know, you start yeah. working. People, like, you getting married? When you getting married? When you getting married? And I wanted to be married. It's just God just kept me to this time as a single person. And, and like you, uh, I just stay busy, just find ministry, mm. find outlets, put my talents to you. So I'm so glad to hear your testimony about that. But to answer you about the website, I will say, and uh, again, I'm not, I, I, I believe wholeheartedly in everything that uh, what Sister Andrew said, that you want to exercise discernment, not only in the online world, but because I know some people, and I don't think Andrew was that clear and said she's not saying online dating is not for anyone. She just feels it's not for her. But I, I think, and, and of course we hear the horror story, uh, I know of, of some apostolics who um, who did get married or Pentecostals who did get married meeting via online. There's two sites that I know of that I've met some outstanding friends of one I'm still single, but <laughs> um, but God's going to change that soon and very soon. But um, there's apostolic singles dot net, um, just apostolic singles dot net, and then there's also apostolic singles network dot com. Um, okay. And, and those okay. Are, and you might have heard of, I don't know, maybe you tried one or both of those or whatnot. No, the one where I, one I was was apostolic singles dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. And there's apostolic singles network dot com. And then no, I hadn't. Up. I hadn't been to that one. Try that one's been around for, ooh, probably ten years. A good ten years, and I've had a. a well, but ten years ago, I wasn't looking. <laughs> no, 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 the founder is actually, uh, or the founder, well, he's married. He was single when he created it. But uh, he's actually UPCI. Uh, I'm not UPCI, but I love the standards that they represent. So, um, so, and even UPCI, I am UPCI. Okay. My okay, great-grandmother was saved under G.T. Haywood and was Sunday school wow. superintendent at, at the Christ Temple. Wow! Hmm. Wow! This is like history on here. <laughs> and my grandfather, my grandfather was an apostolic preacher mm-hmm. and Pentecostal preacher, and um, the church campground in Fort Bell, Indiana. Me and my family were living on it before they got the buildings up. Wow! My my dad's on the memorial in front of the tabernacle. Wow! Wow! Amazing! <laughs> Amazing! So yeah, Apostolic Singles Network dot com is actually I subscribe to the uh Indiana Bible College Perspectives magazine that comes out every month and I see they have ads for that. So IBC and UPC promote this one. Uh, I mean it's okay. not just everything. Oh well then that, that, that that's a good that's a good reference. Right. right Thank you. Right. So, so that I would definitely check them out. Also, I would uh, UPCI has uh, the single adult ministry. So if you go to UPCIFAM dot com and there's events. Now it's not uh, you know it's not like a create a profile and all that jazz, but you can see what uh, events that's going on. Um, I'm not well. Sure. I belong to that one. I post I post Bible studies on that one all the time. Oh. But, but it's not it's not a dating site. Oh yeah, they are definitely not a dating site. It's just just um maybe you get matter of fact I'm going to the Singles Conference in Tennessee in April. Oh, uh, that's awesome. The uh, the singles conference is it power of one? Uh, what's that? Is it power of one singles conference? No, it's not. It's the oh, Tennessee okay. Singles Conference. 
Okay, I, I know. And uh, in well, I think can't, I don't can't remember where Power One's. I looked at it, but it's too far away for me to drive. Oh, okay. Usually, historically, it's always been in Memphis in the Memphis area, unless they've changed it. I haven't checked recently, but uh, uh but anyway. Yeah, I, did change this is, this will this will be my first singles conference since before I was married. So I'm. <laughs> wow. It's not actually. I take that back. It's not a real conference. It's a retreat. They're having a retreat okay. at at the a, a state park on um, in April. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I, if you check out my site, Save the or it ain't mine. The Save the Singles site, Save the Singles dot info. I have those two apostolic links that I mentioned. Um, there's a few others. I think Christian Dating for Free, which is 100% free, uh, which can be good and bad because <laughs> that means anybody can create a profile. But uh, again, mm-hmm. as, as already outlined, and I, I, I don't, I feel like you're pretty, you're very sound and, and whatnot, and, but this is for the benefit of everybody that's listening. You know, always exercise wisdom and judgment, but, not only online, mm-hmm. but in person, because in just I don't know about yeah. you all, but I yeah. had some people who introduced me to people in real life, and they was, was they was, they was something. They, 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 <laughs> no, I, I had a girlfriend, I had a girlfriend, she was dating this guy from another church, and uh, she was going on about, I asked her some questions, I says, well, is because he's been married. Yeah, he's divorced. His wife left him. Wow. And I said, Oh, and how many kids does he have? She said six. I said, she, You got a woman with six kids divorcing her husband. You better find out what's going on. Right. Right. So she, hmm. she had our pastor call his pastor, and he our pastor told her to drop him right now. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. But wow. it just, it, that was the spirit of the Holy Spirit warning me. Let me warn her. Right, right. When, when, when a woman with six kids divorces her husband, you're going to be finding out why. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So true, so true. And that's a good point that you bring out, um, is that uh, when you, especially once you, I, I, I've met people who, I've met some people that I was interested in, and they was like, before you can talk to me, you got to talk to my pastor. I'm not saying you got to do that, but I do think once you start getting serious, uh, and I think maybe in a situation like that, if somebody's kind of got a, a, a interesting past, once y'all got to talking, and if you see it's something serious, you need to you need to talk to that person's pastor. And if y'all not mm-hmm. in the same church, perhaps maybe the pastor won't tell you everything, but like you did, tell her to have your pastor communicate with you know, the, your significant others pass it and say, "Hey, that's right. Hey, that way, that way, we're not we're not violating any any privacy rights." Right. You know, right, mm-hmm. that's right. That's because your pastor goes back. To, that oh, go that goes back being being careful within the within the body of Christ. Yeah. The Bible says, "Know them that labor among you." Right. Yeah, you know. That's what the and it say that. And it does. <laughs> That's it so does. true. And, and I think a lot of times um, I've had a, a situation, I don't think I told uh, Andrew about this one, but I've had you know, my parents pastor the church. And um, a, a lot of times I know people, the way now people are more, I guess more, I don't know what's the word, I guess more independent, for lack of a better word. But I, you, you, as a single person, uh, you should, I think you should be under a, obviously you should be in church, you should be under leadership that you can mm-hmm. respect their opinion or whatnot. And it's been several people in my parents' church over the years that, you know, they they came to each other, came, you know, came together and they came to my, you know, my, 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 my pastor or whatnot and say, hey, we want to get married. And they was like, well, no, you know, we don't feel like this is the will of God. Or... They don't necessarily ever say that, but they'll just say, hey, you need to wait or you need to 
maybe you need to see what's what, you know, just kind of give this a pass. Go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> You know, a, a not a, a one particular example I'm thinking about. I don't even think six months went by before they got divorced. They just they went to the courthouse and got married anyway. And you know, and well, I, I know a specific instance that happened in a church I attended attended in Texas where the, that happened. Wow. They went to the pastor. And the pastor said no, and they went ahead and did it anyway. And it wasn't four or five months later they were divorced. Yeah, I've I've heard of that myself because even, like, in the church body that I grew up in, it was a lady that came from our Mobile Church to Montgomery, and she asked our pastor, you know, she asked her pastor back in Mobile to marry them, and she was just, you know, he was just like, no. He was just just like, and that was our presiding bishop. He was just like, no, uh uh-uh. So she went to our pastor in Montgomery, and then he did it. But my thing is, your pastor in Montgomery, already, I mean, in Mobile, already told you no. So, and yeah. then now today, this day, they're divorced. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. So, okay, I'm, I, I'm going to have to throw a story in. Go ahead. Not, my husband and I were met, engaged eight years before we got married. Oh wow! And he wow. broke in, got he got cold feet and broke the engagement, so we didn't date. In the meantime, we got a new pastor. Well, I was planning on leaving the country, and he he found out and said, said, "This is this is my marriage proposal." He says, "I hear you're leaving for Germany." I said, "Yeah, I'm going to live there." And he says, "Well, if you go to Germany, we won't see each other anymore." I said, "Yep." He says, "Well, why don't you just we just do it?" I said, what? He said, why don't we just get married? That was my marriage proposal. (laughs) So I told him, you are not back out again. We will not date. It's marry me or nothing. So we went to the new pastor, and he, he, my husband had made the, the appointment to visit him, and we both got up and walked in the office, and he's looking at us and says, what's going on? I said, well, we're getting married. <laughs> he says, his jaw dropped. He says, well, most people ask me, and I didn't even know you two were dating. I said, oh, no, I'm not going to date him. It's marriage or nothing. Mm-hmm. He had no idea the, the past relationship. So we were married in two months. <laughs> wow. And like I said, it lasted for 25 years. Y'all mm-hmm. needed to have to be your so. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> like I said, and I had we had the biggest wedding in our we had two thousand people show up for our wedding. Wow! Wow! Oh, wow. That's a lot of people. <laughs> well, they've been watching this go back and forth for years. They were there to make sure we went through with it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> No, oh, I, I can't. I can't complain about my first marriage, but I don't. I don't like living alone. I can do it. Well, obviously, I can do it. I was thirty nine before I got married the first time, but I don't like it. Wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> now, did you have any children out of your union? You know, if you don't mind, and, we you know, lost I... five. We lost five. I, I lost five pregnancies. We have one son, and oh. he has autism. Oh. So, wow. like I said, we went, we went, you know, the the first year of our marriage, we lost two babies. The, se- mm. the second year, I lost my mom and another baby. The third year, I lost my dad and another baby. We, wow. And then the next year, we got, we had my son, and then the year after, we had my son, we lost another baby. Wow, 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 so wow. I know what it is to be up and down. Right, right, right. And you had your share of that uh, from the single side mm-hmm. and as well as on the married side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And wow. God, God, I can, I can honestly say, I've never gone without a meal. I've always had a roof over my head, and God's always taken care of me. Amen. And I, that 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 is my testimony, and I I've learned to be patient. 
When you have someone to ask for this, you learn to be patient. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very person because of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I don't I don't I just think it was the reunion I'm gonna have in heaven. <laughs> mm. I know, I know. That mm. is that's beautiful. My sister had uh she uh she got married late in life and she had uh she did have one son. Actually her first child lived for five months and then passed and then uh many years later she had my nephew and I think she had a couple of uh, several miscarriages before and between. So yeah, that's a that's a uh, that that that's a life changing thing because my sister is, is one that's like very hardcore and uh, seldom cry and just. But I, I I she never vocalized that she's a good bit older than me, but I could tell that the, those those uh, losses were 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 devastating. But like you said, that's a good way of looking at it. What a reunion it'll be in heaven. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow! Wow! I'm so grateful that you joined in and shared that testimony because that is uh, so awesome about the waiting. I'm sure some people that's 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 benefiting from hearing that because we don't hear many testimonies of people who wait, especially single, uh, you know, no kids or whatever the case. So, and the fact that you came mm -hmm. from a family of of uh, of, of holiness and, and, and whatnot, that's just it's really, that's a beautiful testimony. So I'm so glad you came on. Um, Thank you. Andre, you still here with us? Yes, I'm present. I was just listening. You know, absorbing. Late tonight, normally do, and I know there's quite a few other people on the call. Why have you pray pray us out before we uh before we disconnect? Um, any other comments? Anybody had any other comments or, or questions or anything they wanted to share before we uh, move on? Yes, um, my name is Lenora, and um, I uh, first I want to say that I was excited to see the topic tonight, and I always seem to miss the single uh, conference calls, but um, I was excited to, to see the, the uh, topic tonight because I am in an online relationship, and um, yes, and so uh, I can say that um, that it I wouldn't get in another online relationship. Because, yeah, because it can be very complicated. You can get caught up. You're dealing with a spirit. You're not dealing with a person. You're dealing with, you know, you're not dealing with a, I guess you could say, a, well, you're dealing with a spirit. So you can get kind of complicated. You can get caught up in that spirit. And um, especially, you know, by being a Christian, I am a Christian. Wow. And God is not going to let me get, um, you know, he's not, he's taking care of me. He's covering me. And um, he is protecting me. I'm just trying to find the right words for it. But I thank God for being a Christian because I know by call, by being called up into this relationship that that person doesn't have a chance because I am a Christian because I talk to God. I talk to him all the time. But I was content in my Christianity with, with being a Christian, just content. And I got and I got into this um this group online, which another person um added me in. So then I got a request. I got several requests, very requests from, from guys, but this one I only accepted. So we've been talking now for like four months. And um, he's from overseas. He's from Germany. And he's actually, he lives in Germany, but he's from Africa. So, you know, it's like a, it's, it's just, I don't know. I just feel that um, it's complicated. It's really complicated. So, you know, I know that. Uh, this too shall pass, whatever way it's going to go. So, you know, I just thought I would just bring it out, you know, when I am in an online relationship right now. And so. Well, well this is, I mean, I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I throw something in here? Yeah. When this man tried to, when this man, online man, tried to get money out of me, my no, response yeah. was, okay. my response was, I believe in a God that can bring two people halfway around the world and put them together. Uh -huh. I believe in people giving people a, a second, a second chance. 
but I also believe that there are vile, vile predators out there, and you have proved yourself to be one. Mm. And I am hereby unfriending you, and I am praying that God will will find you out and let you. He will take care of you. I don't have to. Mm-hmm. I do believe in a God that can bring people halfway around the world together. My right. My aunt was living in a very small town in Indiana. There were no other Pentecostal boys in the area. And God bought her an evangelist. Mm-hmm. And they are, they are pastoring. As a matter of fact, they're retired pastors in, in Ohio now. And this is before Facebook and stuff. God can bring mm-hmm. people together. He, and if it's the will, they will. But we can't. We have still have to keep our eyes and our ears open, right? Amen. And it ha- yeah, I'll, yeah. And if it's God, if it's God, if it's God, it's okay with me. But I, you know, I feel that. Um, I strongly feel that. Um, God is going to take care of it either way it go because because right. of the life that I because of the life that I live. But you know, I still want. I guess you could say. Um, I want feedback on you know, the things that I said about it, and that's why I called in because I wanted to hear what everyone has to say. Yeah. And like I heard Sister Andrea say, um, or evangelist, or missionary Andre say that um, that you have to question everything. And I question everything. And I, I create question the green card. I question everything. And I think it's because I, I am uh, a woman from the United States that I'm the way I am because, I question everything, and I and I think that um, that's kind of uh, you know God is He shows me a lot, and uh, I you know I I'm, I guess I'm trying to I'm kind of finding out what I'm well, dealing part with. Part of the problem, I, you know, okay. Part of the problem with the four month four, part of the problem with the four month long relationship on the internet. You are not getting eye contact. There's yes, so many feedback. Con- There's so yes, many biofeedback con- results you're not getting. And at what mm-hmm. at, at some point, how much are you going to invest in a relationship that is going to be so difficult? Is he planning on coming here? Are you planning on going there? Well, I I talk to him a lot on Facetime. Okay. Yeah. And but there's still there's still, still there's still cues that you that you can miss. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. There's still so many cues that you do, if you're not physically with them in a room, you can miss. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm just saying you have to consider how much of your time and your energy. Mm-hmm. Where where is the breaking point? It's like right. somebody that's been engaged for twenty years, and the relationship has never been, never reached anywhere. I had a girlfriend right. like that. They've been mm-hmm. they had been engaged for five years and never got around to getting married, and she finally decided enough is enough and moved out. Right. Well, well he offered me to come there to Germany. Yeah, he offered me to come there. And you know, by being a Christian, that that's very hard for me to come there because, I mean, you know. Well, okay, where <laughs> so, does he go to church? Uh, he goes to church. Uh, that's a, a, a he's apostolic like I am. But, yeah. Um, what, so, he, so contact his pastor. Uh huh. Right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. He he. Says he think he tell he he says that his pastor know that I'm coming. I told him I I would come, but he said his pastor know that I'm coming, and you no. know we supposed no, to. No, that's, that's yeah. not the point. Mm-hmm. Contact his pastor. Uh-huh. He could be married with three kids and you not know it. Hmm. Yeah. If you spent four months. Why? Why would you be afraid to contact this pastor unless you're feeling you're, you're thinking there may be something wrong? Can, can I say this? Have, you, have your yes, pastor I'm... contact his pastor? That's that's even better. Have your pastor contact his pastor? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. You can get a lot of them. Even you don't need to know everything. Mm-hmm. And the, his pastor will be put on the spot if it's your pastor contacting his pastor. I'm assuming your pastor knows you're in this relationship. No, but my pastor, um, what's so good about my pastor, he's a prophet. And I can just, I don't have to ask him one thing. I can get all I need out of his out of his message. And I know that he would not even agree with me going there. <laughs> you know, well, I know well, that well, that's, a, that's, not, that's not the point. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's sometimes when there's, sometimes there's, it's fine thing the preacher and getting the word from it, but sometimes you have to go to them as a member and request leadership roles, and that's one of his leadership roles. Yes, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he don't have a problem with it. I just kind of no, know what he's going to say no, already. No, I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm not whether he does or not. You still mm-hmm. need to have his pastor contact your pastor. Contact his pastor. And make sure mm-hmm. this is on the up and up. Four that's months a is a idea. long time. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. This is a that's voice fine. of wisdom speaking here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andre, you was, uh, missionary Andre, you was getting ready to say something? Yes. Um, I, I'm just... If it, like Rob, like Brother Rob has known me for 17 years, so he knows I'm with certain things I'm very straightforward with. It, it appears, okay. and you know, I'm a social worker by trade. I mean, I am yes. a social worker, that's, and I work in mental health. Yes. With mm-hmm. that being the case, and I've been a behavioralist for several years. How mm-hmm. you were talking, my sister in Christ, you have reservations about this. Oh yeah. I have what now? I have what now? Reservations. Reservations. Okay. You within yourself. It, it wasn't even qu- you questioned all of this. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You in your own heart, you questioned all of it. Mhm. Okay. I mean, it's yeah, you know, it's not even my. I mean, just who I am as a person and what I do, uh-huh. and how uh-huh. you were talking. Yes. It, it's 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 uh, it's bothering your spirit that you it's something about this person that's bothering your spirit. Mm-hmm. It's not even mm-hmm. a distance. It's something in your own spirit mm-hmm. that's bothering you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like I said, I'm not the guru of dating. No, I'm not. I, I have mm-hmm. my own. Like I said, I've had some, you know, flops throughout my life when it comes to dating. But when I know within my own heart and within my own spirit that a person mm-hmm. ain't quite right, I go mm-hmm. with it. I understand. <laughs> I and the it. problem is with four months into it, you've got so much invested. Your 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 spirit's fighting with itself. You've invested a lot of time and energy mm-hmm. and faith, hope into this relationship. Mm-hmm. And we talk when he wakes up to go to work in the morning. We talk when he come home. We talk when he go to bed. We talk. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like oh yeah, and it's we, we on you know we on Facetime and it's every single day, every single day. Mm-hmm. But it's still, I've been like, I've been like, I am like wrestling. It's like I'm wrestling. It's like I'm mm-hmm. wrestling with a, with a, um, with a um, how can I say, with a demonic spirit. Within yourself, yeah, within your own spirit. Yeah, it's with it's myself. Something. Yeah. I don't know what that well, something well, is, well, and you know what the well, enemy well, is. You well, know what well, well, it well, is. Well, well, yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shan. Um, I forgot your name, the lady that's telling the story about the four-month relationship. Uh, Can I ask Mm -hmm. a question? What is it that you're wrestling with exactly about this person? Like, what Mm -hmm. is it that's not sitting well with you? Well, um, I don't know. It was something that was bothering me, and I'm wondering, I was wondering, like, what is, why I'm not at peace? What's going on? What's going mm, on? That piece is so yeah. important. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah and uh, so I, um, yeah, so I was wondering what's what's going on. Why I'm not at peace? But 
at the same mm-hmm. time, he has a lot of sweet words to say, very kind. So I, I basically just started digging. I started digging and I started digging it um, through Facebook and try looking at his friends and just looking and I've asked him, I always ask him questions, make sure they ain't got a green card and I, you know, I just, I have say what I feel like I need to say because this, I have my life to stake here. And so, and I went to dig and I dig and I, someone he said he stopped talking to and I didn't know about this person until he mentioned it. So I'm like, why did he mention this person to me? So I went to dig and I think that this person, by me digging the way I went to dig and I kind of connected to it too and I see this person still online. So I'm like, okay, he lied about that. And he swear to God about it. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's a Christian man. Why is he swearing to God? You know, he should know that's dangerous. He should know swearing to God. And the truth is right here. So I just saw so just certain little things like that, which he may sound immature, but a lie is a lie. Yeah. And he and he won't and he won't he won't admit that he's lying. But it's yeah. just like it's like Well a, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some men just get off on stringing two or three women along anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, here's the thing, we're God's children, we're his daughters, God is your father, he's not going to let some knucklehead guy come and tangle your heart up and not make you aware of that. (laughs) If you are the type of woman who is praying, you are before God every day, God Mm -hmm. is the guarder of your heart and the protector of your life and soul. So Mm -hmm. he is showing you all the signs, don't ignore them. Right. I, I just I just did a Bible study on temptation, and one thing a lot of people do not do, he strictly tells you to flee temptation. Yeah. And when he's warning you about something, and you override it and keep on doing it, mm-hmm. he can't protect you. You put your will ahead of his. Yeah. He's shown you he's shown you some things and he's letting you know in your spirit there's something not right. Yeah. Yeah, and you know yeah, and I um I you know, I talk to God, you know, like I would talk to a friend. I said, Well God, I've seen this and um mm-hmm. I need you to help me with this. Let this man I want this man to just I don't want him in my life no more. He really you know, just I just take him out, God. I don't want him in my life if I am if he's talking, seeing someone else, if he's dishonest. Whatever, I just admit this the way I am. And so I, um, I uh, today, not yesterday, yeah, a couple of days ago, I noticed a different person on his page. And so I looked up that person, I looked at the person's profile, and I'm like, wait a minute, he's, he's friends with this person, and I don't know why they showed me that person, but I happened to look at up at that person. That person happened to be a sister of mine from another location. We have several churches stationed all over, one in Jacksonville, it is all over. And this person happened to be a member of one of the churches there. And so I'm like, I could not believe what I was seeing. I'm like, this is a guy had gone so far is you're just throwing it in my face. Like, here it is right here. Yeah. So, yeah, so, and I'm still, and I mentioned it, I still not to say anything, but I mentioned that to him, and he acted like he didn't know what I was talking about. So I'm like, I guess basically I, I'm that right ready to, like, I, and I know it's good to, to to talk to Christians because I feel like the power is on the telephone tonight, and it's just time for me to, like, cut loose, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um. A lot of people don't know it, but one reason why texting is so addicted to adolescents is every time you get an answer to your text, you get a little shot of dopamine (laughs) in your brain. No, it's been proven. So every time he sends you a text, you get a little excited. And as we talk about Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And so you're actually addicted to this guy at this point. Yeah, we are, yes. I, after four months mm-hmm. of talking all day, every day, right. and you're, you know, you're addicted know, to him. Always sweet stuff. It's always nice. It's always, you know, 
Yeah. Yeah. And I know what I like, you know? So, <laughs> well, the, that's you like I go told this girl, I know what I like. No yeah. have, you know, every woman has a right to be told that she's loved. Mm-hmm. And every one that woman has it, but to use it for for false motives is wrong. Right. And he, he, you need to break this relationship off. Okay. You need to block him. You can block mm-hmm. him from his messages and unfriend him, because mm-hmm. you, it's just been you. You just admit it. It's been confirmed. You're addicted to him, mm-hmm. and we're not to be ch- chained up to anything in this world. Yeah. And it's going to be rough. Like I said, I was in this relationship for two day, two weeks, and I was addicted to him until I realized what he was doing. And I missed mm-hmm. it when I when I broke it off. But it was the right thing to do. Yeah, and I kind of worry about the sister, Dad. This sister, we had we are under the same the same pastor, and she don't know me, and I don't know her. But right. I kind of, you know, I, I kind of worry about the sister that he's not trying to you know, get in her ear. I don't know, but... Well, you can't go gossiping. And I had the same situation happen to me about uh, this brother in the church that had gone overboard on Sabbath keeping. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go to the pastor about it, and my sister said no. She says, that's gossiping. She says... What you need to do is turn it over to God, and God will take care of it. Okay. And I found out afterwards that God had already taken a, a he had already <laughs> left the church on his own. And this was the man in charge of the men's ministry. Mhm. Yeah. Turn it over to God and let God take care of it. He he stopped you. Mhm. He can stop her too. Right. Well, can right. I say something? Um, and and hopefully I can you know encourage you. Um. You know, I know it's, it's very, I don't know how long you've been single. And sometimes when you are single for a long time and when you think you found somebody, you know, it's exciting to you, it's new, and you don't want to let it go. Um, but when the Lord lets you know about people, and trust me, when he really begins to reveal things more and more to you, you know, just, and I can speak from, you know, being a young woman, getting saved, you know, filled the Holy Ghost at 24 years old and still not married at 34 years old, um, even when the wrong people may come into our lives and that person can be really missed the wrong, you know, you you read about scriptures and you hear about what people say, oh, God can hear you, God can hear you. And I know some things can be, you know, you know, just can become repetition and you're like, oh, I keep hearing those and hearing those things. But trust me, when a person is wrong for you, you know, God can heal your heart, soul. You know, he can strengthen you, so. thank the Lord, that when that, you know, although you, you may think about that person, but when God heals your heart, he heals mm-hmm. your heart. And although the yeah. thought may be there, but I'd rather for the thought to be there than the hurt to be there. You know, right. God You're can right. do all those things, you know, he really can. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people, like I heard a mother say, you know, sometimes people may say, oh, wait, 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 you know all that. That's not really encouraging mm-hmm. the singles when you're going through mm-hmm. something. Um, wait, just telling a person, wait, that's not encouraging them. You know, even sometimes, even if you can't say anything, pray for them because everybody doesn't mm-hmm. have the same gift. Um, but I can encourage you that, you know, the Lord is able to strengthen a heart and he can strengthen it mightily. And so, you know, when he showed these things, it may be difficult um, but you can let it go at an early stage because the longer you hold on to, it can get worse. Mm-hmm. So let him heal your heart in the early stages rather than the latter stages. Like I yeah. said, God will not over over. He will not overpower your will. You can will yourself against God. Great God. Yeah. I'm gonna say this. Um, you know, one night I had a dream, and I dreamed there were three snakes, and they all were fat snakes. One snake was looked like it was under, like it was on the ground on the cover or something. The other snake was brown, and then there was another snake that had uh, the colors of red, green, and looked like it was yellow. And the snake was black, but it had those stripes on it. And I just couldn't understand. I said the snake was so pretty in the dream, but you know, a snake is a snake. I don't care how pretty it is. And I kind of wondered, I'm like, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Hello? Oh, okay. Yeah, now I was 
talking about the snakes that I dreamed about. I thought that was another warning uh, from God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is. Let me interject. Um, I've been listening, and and by the by, the young man being from another country, um, demonic spirits are assigned to region. And I remember you saying something about you felt like it was some type of demonic uh, uh, force that you were wrestling with. And so, by him being in another region separate than yours, then the fight is going to be harder anyway because there are demonic forces that are work in his region that aren't here. And so just like the woman of God was saying a few moments ago, it is better to separate from it now uh, than continue on and have to deal with it later. Uh, we are to test the spirit by the spirit. <laughs> if there's anything in our spirit that rises up when we're speaking with someone, that's God telling us, letting us, letting us know to go the other way. Uh, so many times as single young women, we, we try to ignore the signs because we like the attention. We like the, the, mm. the late phone calls or the early morning texts or, or just to say you're on my mind. But the enemy knows, as you stated, exactly what will send your way to make you feel okay in yourself. But the Bible says that we're supposed to die daily. And so we have to kill our flesh so the Spirit of God can dwell in us some more. And when he speaks, we'll be more apt to do what he tells us to do. So remember, God, be encouraged to let him go and to hold on to what God has for you. Because as the woman of God spoke tonight, she said that God is preparing her for the man of God. And I'm sure that God's doing the same for you. Be encouraged. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, I'll tell anybody, you know, because of my lack of focus during certain periods in my life, yeah, the enemy knows exactly what it is that will, you know, get, get us, basically. And yeah. right. what I've learned, sure what I've learned, yeah, he, <laughs> does, he does, he does. And mm-hmm. what I've learned is that it's going to sting, it's going to sting for a while, but rather it now than later. I mean, what's this, I mean, if you think, you have to thank God that, it could have been something else, and right. he didn't allow it that to happen. Because I mean, I like I said, certain things even in my life, I I don't, I'm not, you know, that um, I'm not that um, or, you know, I I wish I would have avoided, it and if you know, but on the same token, I said, well, Lord, uh, yeah, thank you, because it could have been this, or it could have yeah. been that. Because mm-hmm. what if you would have went to Germany and old boy did some crazy? Right. <laughs> you, right. You, I mean, let's just be honest. You know. Yeah, you well, right. I, I think about I, I've, that. I've got mm-hmm. I've got friends in Germany, and Germany right now is not the best place to go to. Exactly, but on the same token, you know, we just have to say, Lord, despite of how I feel, I yet thank you. Mm-hmm. You you got mm-hmm. me out. You know, you you protected me from what it could what it could have been. Yeah. Yeah, I might feel hurt. I might feel angry. I might feel disgusted. But, God, you protected me. You kept right. me from the evil one. Right. And I, I thank God for even, you know, going through my past. I said, Lord, I could have, it could have been me. It could yeah. have been me in this. It could have been me in that. But, God, I yet thank you for protecting me. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, you know, I keep saying, you know, a lot of people come up to me like, why you ain't in no relationship? Because I'm tired of failed relationships. Right. I'd right. rather just yeah. wait on God. Yeah. And I can I can honestly testify to this. I'm more content in my life at 36 than I was 10 years ago or even um, five yeah. years ago. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm more content mm-hmm. now than even five or even two years ago. I'm more content in this season right now because I already know that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And I have mm-hmm. faith in God. My trust is in God. My trust is not in man or in a man. My Great trust God. is in God. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, the one, I mean, somebody, said, somebody said earlier something about tell us, do you just have to wait? No, we don't just have to wait. We as singles need to encourage each other, yeah, not yeah. to say we wait. Encourage each other, remind each other how God, how many times God has 
our, the Bible says, by the word of our testimony, we are saved. Mm-hmm. When we testify of the victories in our life, we encourage others also. And that's what we need, as singles need to do. We need to encourage each other. And, you know, it's not the end of the world if you never get married. We still have yeah, a Savior on the other side. We still have a Savior on the other side is going to go and give it, it'll be joy unspeakable. Yeah. And think about what we do have. We do have other believers. We do have other things in our lives that God has blessed us with. So it's not what we don't, I mean, we can't keep focusing about what we don't have. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And what's so amazing that, yeah. What's so amazing that, and, and I know this is God. Um, what's so amazing is that now this this other church location is is way in Jacksonville, Florida, and I live in Sly, and the church that I go to is in Slidell. So look how far. And this person was not even a Facebook friend of mine, but we have the same. We have one of the same Facebook friends. So he was some kind of way. I keep must have chased, went through my friends and got her friends. I don't know. But right there was a sign right there. I said, now, this is God right here. It's how in the world he lets me know of a person way over 12, 13, another state, 13 hours away. <laughs> so it, it would only get worse if I don't cut it off. I understand. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then that, you know, thank, thank God for showing you. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. the right. for, the, I mean, it's like the signs are, you put it right in front of your, your face. You ask and you're right. like, here it is. Clear sign, mm-hmm. right. you know, and it's up to you not to look through those rose-colored glasses and keep defending what you see, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. And so thank God that he showed you yes. without question what's going on. Like you said, states away. You're not even this other other person's friend, and it's like, what? How did how did this happen? He he showed you, right. you know. Mm-hmm. You're getting point blank. Mm-hmm. And she's so brand I would, new. I would, I would just I would just thank God. You know, I'm sure there. Are yes. Gonna, you're gonna miss him or miss the conversation, miss somebody yeah. talking to. But then you know what? Thank God. For, thank you God for showing me who he really is. And yeah. thank and you I God for letting me not get getting deep, deep into it. You know, it's still early, mm-hmm. like the sister said. It's yes. So early. Praise God. And, you know, I, I didn't hear the other lady. She mentioned something about spirits from Africa. Her voice was kind of, kind of, uh, wasn't clear. As she said, the spirits from Africa, demonic. I told her I was feeling the dem- demonic spirit or. No, I was saying that. Uh, spirits are assigned to region. Mm-hmm. So, and she's so not assigned to people, too. True, but uh, basically what that is saying mm-hmm. is, uh, if, you look, if, you, if you remember when Jesus was um, talking to the disciples and he came upon the, um, the legion, and they were in, they yeah. were in a region, they asked that he would not take them out of that area, out of that region. So when you are dealing with uh, men, women, whatever, in other countries, there are certain spirits that are assigned to that region. And so when the, when the young lady was saying that she felt something uh, demonic, uh, there, there, there is a strong possibility, that was my point in saying that, there's a strong possibility that she was dealing with a demonic influence from that region with that man. Okay, I understand. I, I understand clearly. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate it very much. Really do. And it's, it's helping me out because I'm not going to answer my phone in the morning. I'm letting go tonight. Without a doubt. Seriously. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Amen. God give you strength, so you give you strength. Thank you, Jesus. Peace to God who passes all understanding and God will give you peace in the midst of the storm. So it's, it's gonna happen. God's going God's got you. It, it, tonight was not mm-hmm. by chance, but God no, mm-hmm. God created this for you. Uh this is one Amen. thing I want to say. And I appreciate all the all the women of God uh, just chiming in because I, I I feel this has just been a wonderful time. That's why I'm just chilling out and just just loving what y'all are saying. One thing I I can say about um, 
I I probably been as experimenting with online dating for many, many, many years. Um, I of course I'm single, but one thing I can say for me is that I've met a lot of uh uh I guess other brothers and sisters in Christ as a result of online. Maybe it didn't work for us or maybe they was older, maybe they were way younger than me, but we developed a friendship. But one thing that I can say that came to mind while the, the sister was talking about the, the long distance thing. Um, the apostolic particular, I know this is safe and single is open for everybody. I mean, everybody of the Christian faith um, can can listen in. But I, I, I'm apostolic, Pentecostal, and I think most of the people who discover safe and single, uh, especially if it's via social media, is probably be also apostolic and Pentecostal. So the apostolic Pentecostal community is very large, but it's also very small. For example, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm currently in a relationship with someone, and we met online, but when we got to talking, she knew a pastor and first lady that I knew, and actually it was a church that I was once a part of. And so if you, even though we were states apart, like 13 hours away from each other, if in the, in the apostolic community, if you talk, or and even as I think you were saying, you start looking at Facebook friends or whatnot. I, I can't. I just I could say probably a good sixty. Well, I would say seventy, eighty percent of the time, people that I've met online, if they was apostolic Pentecostal, even if they was in another organization, more than likely they know somebody that mm-hmm. I know, and it may not be like a super super close friend, but it's like you'll discover, you know, somebody, you have somebody in common, especially now in social media world. You might be connected to somebody that goes to their church and or whatever mm-hmm. or some kind of way you've had some kind of, they had some kind of dealing with somebody that you know. So the Apostolic community is big. I mean, it's, you know, I've had the opportunity to travel to a few countries and met, you know, Apostolic people all over. But uh, even with that, I mean, even going to, like, Canada and Jamaica, I've met people like, hey, I know somebody in the U.S. or whatnot, uh, such and such, pastor, what, such and such, or whatnot, or they go to this church or whatnot. It's like, oh, wow. You know, so it's like if you do, do the online thing. Man, again, it goes for anybody and everybody. It's just, it's just a, a nugget <laughs> that you can mm-hmm. dip in your sauce and eat if you like or, or choose to avoid or whatnot. But I, if you ask questions, more than likely, you'll probably – there's probably somebody that that know of, or there's some kind of connection, and somebody that can vouch uh, or testify of, hey, this brother's in the church, or this sister's in the church, or whatnot. They might not know them dearly or closely, but it's it's um that's um can add to your you know your level of uh of uh, the description in the Bible that says uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established, and I am. First and foremost, believe you should definitely hear from God uh, mm-hmm. for yourself. I, I, that's number one, and I think Sister Andrea uh, mentioned that. I think uh, other sister, I'm, I'm loving what she's saying. The sister with the the, the husband who's, who's died, and uh, uh, I think she said, and a lot of you all said that. Sister um, Bridget has said that. But um, in addition, I I'm, I believe, and this is just me, and I, I and I stand on the scripture out of. Let everything be established out of the mouth for two or three witnesses. I believe that God will speak to you, but I'm leery of people who say God told them something and nobody else confirms that, particularly a pastor or other men or women of God. So if you're mm-hmm. kind of on the island saying that this is the will of God and nobody else is kind of standing with it. you, you 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 might you might better check that. I mean, even Noah. Had his family that stood with him, you know. Uh, um, you know, he was kind of by himself the way the Bible right, but he did have eight people to, to get on the ark. So, um, you know, you should have, I, I believe, a pastor or some other saved people. And sometimes I'm not even knocking confirmation from unsaved people because uh, sometimes God can use the law to speak into your life. Mm-hmm. For and I'm not saying look for lost people to speak in your life, but I'm saying God can use them. Um, there's yes, a lot of in the Bible that uh, a lot of the kings, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, all these people was, was not godly people, but God used them for such a time as, as was, you know. So 
I believe there's no island God can can speak. He will speak to you, and I believe He will speak to others. And um, that's why I guess it's it's good to know them that labor among you. Uh, I believe somebody mentioned that tonight. So I said a lot of good things. I'm gonna listen to this recording myself, not to hear me, but to hear y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Any any last anything else before we before we disconnect before we let Andrea pray us on out? Uh, I just wanted to say I think that needs to be a part two of this because there's so many things that could be said about this subject and a lot of people are dealing with this right. and may need counsel on it. I don't think this this session was sufficient. <laughs> you know what I was honestly just I don't. Uh, to, uh, to my friend that's with me, I was saying, we should have a, I, I think this is, uh, this is the part two. Uh, the part. So you, confirmation. <laughs> oh, this is, okay, I'll be ready. <laughs> be, <laughs> and I want to, I want to, I want to add this, um, uh, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a real good prayer, prayer warrior as far as like, pray well, go to church every Sunday. I know a lot. He said he's a prophet, you know. He said he's called prophet, but he's, you know, he don't work as a prophet in the church. So maybe that could be a part of y'all second part <laughs> to be aware of that, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't missing was that you wanted you recommending someone for the second part, or yeah, I, re- I, I was telling him that he's a good. He prays well, and he goes to church every Sunday. So. Maybe that could be a part of your second too. Because <laughs> sometimes oh, oh, oh. when women hear, hmm? Who, who, who prays well? Are you talking about? I'm, I'm my, about my, my online, my online partner. I was my online oh. partner. He, he prays well, and he, I go to church every Sunday. So that needs to be. I would think that would be good to bring up on your next online topic because, I, you know, it's something to be aware of. You know, even the devil mm-hmm. uh, can quote scriptures from, what, Genesis of Revelation. Right. Of course. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know, what? I want to say this, too. Uh, and I, I don't know. I'm not. I really let the, you have to let the young ladies uh, <laughs> address you with that one. Uh, but uh, I, I want to say this, too, just because uh, – and I've had this to, to happen to me. Um, Sometimes, you know, you might meet somebody and uh, it don't work out. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I I think when I was younger, when I was in my early 20s especially, you know, I was like, oh, it didn't work out. They, they're a horrible person, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. But as in my maturity now, um, and I'm not going to say it's not people, not only online, but in the real world, it's in the church that's not living like they should. They might say they one thing and, mm-hmm. and, of course, living another thing. But there are people that are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost people. They are on their way to heaven. Uh, and just because they are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost people, on their way to heaven, uh, with a prayer life, preaching life, you know, missionary, et cetera, et cetera, um, that don't mean they're necessarily for you. Um, they can sell it for somebody else, and I mean, <laughs> just because. And I think, um, uh, I, I, I do. I, this is something my mother, who she's gifted in the prophetic too. Uh, uh, she says that two Holy Ghost filled believers should be able, when married, they should be able to live together and stay married to death do and part. However, not everybody that stays sanctified Holy Ghost filled should be married. Just, and I think. Many, many, many years ago, uh, and maybe people still believe like this, and it's not necessarily bad, but uh, I think many years ago, I think our, our people that was older and saved, and maybe this, it probably worked because I think people people had different hearts and minds and levels of a commitment mm-hmm. back in the day. But uh, two people that was just saved, they was in the church, they went to church, they was in church, especially in our our, our are, are more, you know, strictly Pentecostal apostolic churches. If they were saved and sanctified and they were church members, they could just get married and they would be together death doing part. Um, I think the, the the way everybody now we have so many different family dynamics and backgrounds and there's just so there's just basically an all out attack against the family just being real with it. You know, fifty years ago 
Uh, there was obviously we all know there wasn't as many divorces. There wasn't as many uh, non traditional families, so to speak. Now in 2017, what is a traditional family? Actually, a two parent family is non traditional now more than yeah. than 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 it, than, it, than, it, than it, what it was norm once upon a time. So you know, not only. So you have to make sure they're safe and sanctified, which is a good thing. That's number one. I mean, for me, mm-hmm. you know, I want to know, hey, is this person faithful to God? Are they faithful to church? You know, et cetera. But I think you also got to go when it comes to dating or seeking a spouse, you need to know calling and um, purpose. Mm-hmm. You, know, you need to know your purpose, first of all. And when you know your purpose, then you can, when somebody comes to you as a young lady, approaches you or as a young man, you know, um, you're interested in somebody, you got to say, hey, this is what God has called me to. Maybe, you know, if you're called to be a missionary, for example, um, to go to, I don't know, the foreign countries and serve or whatnot, you, you just can't marry any anybody because you need to marry a husband or wife that's going to be, either they're going to be cool with you going, doing those mission trips and they being in, in, in the native country or they're going to be willing to travel with you. Uh, or if right. you have a pastoral calling on your life, you need to say, "Hey, I mean, you got to let anybody that's interested. Hey, this is what God was, what, what God called me to. Can you deal with that?" And I've, 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 I've met people, been introduced to people, uh, whether in person or online, and I told them some of the things that I know God has called and placed on my life that I may not be walking in now, but I know it's going to happen. And they was, I guess, woman enough to say, "Hey, you know, I don't want to be." involved with, with that. I don't want to be married to someone involved in that ministry. And I won't say they wouldn't say. Probably the old, younger me would say, oh, they wouldn't say it enough. It's just that wasn't their calling. That wasn't where mm-hmm. they were at. I think as we become mature, um, I think I think a mature single person, and it's not an age mature, it's just you should know, you should definitely know Christ for you to have a relationship with Christ. But I think a mature single should know their calling, know, you know, this is what, and you, I don't think everybody, I don't think you know every single detail of what God has. I don't think David knew all when he was tending the sheep that what God had from, or Joseph, or, yeah, knew everything when he was in part of the house that he was going to be, or even when he saw the dream, you know, the sheaves, his uh, dad and mother sheaves bound before him, you know, he didn't realize that he was going to be, I don't think, second in command of Egypt, but he had an idea that, hey, he was going to be a leader, he was going to be a ruler of some sort. So um, I think before, first thing for me, if this is just my opinion, it's the gospel according to Rob, uh, before you start dating, the requirements for being dating or dating, courtship, I know every church has different names, uh, I think as I was taught, you shouldn't date anybody until you the age of, or ready to get married. All of us are 18 and over on this call, so that's that's already a given. But I think also you need to know your calling. Like, again, you might not know every single thing that you're going to do from now to the Jesus come, but I think you need to have an idea. If you don't know anything, I don't have a clue of what you call called to, I think that's probably first and foremost, God, show me what you want me to do. What? What I what do you want me? What do you what am I supposed to be doing in your kingdom? Uh, yeah, and that, and it's, that's yeah, like it's really part of your identity. I mean, how can you really pick a spouse or a husband or wife? Say yes to a husband or or pick a wife if you don't know where God your your spiritual identity. And I mean, I think it's good to know natural identity. I think a lot of emphasis has been put on that. You know, especially in the modern world, you know, you need to get your college degree before you get married. And that's, you know, some people, that's good. That's I, that is, that's good advice. I won't say it's, you have to do that. I've known people who got married and they go to school together, and that works for them. But uh, I think most important, you should definitely have an idea like, hey, I'm called to this ministry or that ministry. This is what God wants me to do. Um, and when you know that, that'll, like I said, that'll, that'll, I won't say it won't minimize everything, but that'll 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 eliminate a lot of, of foolishness that may come to your life. Um, Cause again, 
You could be dating someone who's saved and sanctified on fire for God, but they're not for you. They may be somebody mm-hmm. else. And and that's not putting you down. That's not putting them down. It's like you don't want to have nobody that – you don't want to have somebody else blessing. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, You know, I don't want to have uh, – Brother Cornbread's blessing when God has a blessing for Brother Rob, you know, and I don't think you want Sister Watermelon's blessing when, you know, God got a blessing for you because when something's tailor-made, I mean, it's like a suit, you know. It's like one thing, buying something that any and everybody can, can wear versus, you know, something that was custom-made for you. And I think when it comes to spouses, I think God has someone custom-made for each and every one of us that has a desire to be married. So don't settle. And I'm going to say this and shut up. <laughs> uh, I, I subscribe to Success Magazine. It's a secular magazine, but it has a lot of, um, I guess, inf- motivational things. And uh, on one of the covers of uh, November, uh, it's Megan Kelly, which is a popular news anchor. She just released a book called Settle for More. And I, I just really been wearing that theme. I haven't read the book, but I love the title. I mean, we so often, I think, you know, as I think one of the sisters said, a lot of times when we don't date, you know, it's not many men in the in the church. It's not many, more women, of course. But, you know, in the apostolic arena, you know, it's not many choices as it would be outside of the church. And um, sometimes it's easy to settle for less. But I think God wants us all to settle for more, you know, settle for that, that customized uh, blessing that God has for you. So, um, Yeah. And I want to say that um, you, you just gave me confirmation, and you don't have to feel bad about anything you said because I was thinking the same exact thing, and I don't want nothing that's not for me. But, um, you know, I just, I just thank you for everything that you said. Um, you know, I mean, you're right. <laughs> you're right. No, right. Mhm. Yeah, and everything that I was, everything you said, I was, I thought about so much of that, but I was thinking amongst myself. So by listening to you and listening to the whole group, it actually helped me. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I might sound a little immature on the phone today, but you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, it's yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I hope I, I wasn't trying to wasn't trying to shoot you down. I was about the immaturity. No, you um, wasn't. No, it's okay. It's it's all right. You know, I was thinking that today. I was thinking that you know, just recently. I was thinking, you know, maybe I'm not for him. He needs a certain type of woman. You what? know, because you know, I mean, I can't. You know, and I was just thinking that. You know, so it's okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I I I like what uh I, the other sister she might be I I didn't get her name but a, a lady that that's been on here that's commenting a lot I've dated some people internationally a, a couple of them actually uh and so I, one of my favorite and you know it they just it just I I don't say it, I don't say it was bad it just I just felt like it wasn't for me you know um. Mm-hmm. And so I believe that can happen as Moses was married to an Ethiopian woman, so he wasn't Ethiopian. So uh, there's a lot of stories in the Bible uh, where people was, I guess, for probably what we would say in the, in the U.S., interracial, but, you know, uh, there's inner country <laughs> marriages or whatnot that can happen too. And that's God can make, I think if it's God's will, there's no boundaries. Uh, and actually, one of my favorite stories, which is Isaac and Rebecca, uh, mm-hmm. Isaac's dad sent out the servant to go find his son and wife. And what I was told by somebody who went to Bible school or whatnot, I'm just a solid pastor of a church with 2,000 members or so uh, in Tampa, uh, he said, uh, research says that he traveled 800 miles for to find basically his, his his master's son or wife or whatnot. So I think if it's God's will, uh, and that was 800 miles on, you know, by a donkey on foot, so that was just like going to Africa or something, you know, in today's time. But uh, so mm-hmm. I, I, there's no limit in God, but I, I think when God will is in it, he, he's going to give his provision. It's not going to be a strain. 
Um, even for me, um, I don't think I make a whole lot of money. I do okay. But even when I met those young ladies, God opened up the doors for finance. I mean, I got two trips for one on one uh, that I went to go see. And I thank God just wanted me to meet other people just to see more apostolics or more godly people in other countries or whatnot. So for me, if it's not a if it's not man, if I don't get a marriage out of a relationship, then I should get some type of ministry. Sometimes it's ministering to them. Sometimes it's ministering to them. That Amen. brain will grow. So, That's it. Uh, mm-hmm. So you, you know, you should always be able to take something out of it. Uh, and, and I know I think all of us probably at that point where we don't want to get any more lessons when we date. We just want to get love out of it. So. <laughs> But God, God's got that time. He's got that time. And it, I, I claim that everybody get married in 2017, you know, in Jesus' name. But, of course, at the end of the day, God, God's got it in control, and he knows what we need when we need it. So everybody just right. be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. And we're going uh, we gonna, to we gonna try to continue this. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm a fool on Sister Andre. Maybe we can. Maybe I can get a couple of people uh, that can kind of, Chime in on uh, uh, so I mean, I'm, I'll be ready. Oh, okay. I'll be ready. <laughs> All right. So I, I, might, I might pull us a little conference call panel on this. So, uh, and that'll be, whew, that'll be Valentine's, actually. Uh, uh, that'll be after Valentine's Day. But, hey, February is going to be, it's going to be a blessed month for us in Jesus' name. So, uh so, yeah, so with that being said, well, I know we don't normally go. We just went over two hours, which is a blessing. I, I really, I'm so glad for everybody that uh, that stayed in with us tonight. I hope and pray that you uh, got some encouragement, uh, some strength, some empowerment. Uh, again, this is recorded, so I'm going to. I've been slow about uploading recordings, but I think I need to upload this one pretty fast, y'all. So I think this is going to be a blessing to to the people that was on here and to future listeners. So um, my announcement, uh, our next call is going to be uh, in February. Of course, we meet on the 2nd and 4th. Uh, the 2nd is going to be on the 11th, uh, and that's our prayer focus. We just focus primarily on taking prayer requests. Uh, and uh, just kind of praying, praying uh, just for, for everybody, uh, the prayer requests that we take. So, and of course, our fourth one will be on the 25th. So we're going to revisit this online dating, uh, maybe long distance dating, and just throw in some of the things that we, we talked about and elaborate a little more uh, on the 25th. So I hope and pray you all can join in on the 11th and also on the 25th. Uh, again, as always, check out our website, www.saveandsingle.info. Uh, of course, we're on Facebook, we're on Periscope, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube. Uh, Sister Andre, do you mind giving out any contact info? Uh, I always ask the uh, guests if they have any. Oh, contact. you want to share uh, your Facebook or whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Okay. Um, I'm Sister Andrea LaFleur. Um you can find me on Facebook at uh, Andrea LaFleur. Uh, uh, my Instagram is uh, Pretty Sigma Woman because uh, I'm a Sigma Gamma Rho. <laughs> so um, Pretty Sigma Woman 1922 uh, on oh, Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Same on my my first name Andrea LaFleur. And that's pretty much it. Um, also, is my email, uh, it's my last name, which is LaFleur.Andrea at gmail.com. Um, I'm also, uh, if any time that you are in Birmingham, you can inbox me. Um, if you want to uh, come to church with me, I do go to uh, Tower of Prayer Church, which is in Leeds, Alabama. Right. Uh, and my, and my uh, pastor is uh, Pastor Carrie Shaman Webster. And uh, Jesus does show up, so <laughs> I, it does. I, I enjoyed some services. Well, one service, I went with you one time in church, so I, I enjoyed it. I still got those notes. So, it was good. so go ahead, Sister I'm going to let you pray us out. And um, okay. just close us out in prayer. We're going to be this miss after that. So go ahead, take us to the phone. I have a question. Uh, Sister Andrea, what is your, how to spell your last name? It's L E F L O R E L E F L O R E O R E. 
Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay. Um, first of all, before I close out in prayer, um, like I said, uh, God had dealt with me with this uh, with this topic. Um, like I said, I talked to Brother Rob about this topic. I want to say, was it December? When yeah. You came, when, yeah, in December. And um, yeah. even God has spoke to me that night, and um, God has spoke to my heart and said that somebody on this prayer call has some reproductive issues and breast health issues. And I just want to let somebody know, those people that are dealing with those issues, uh, God has told me to tell you that you will be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Man. Praise God. Praise God. So with that being said, uh, we go ahead with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, first of all, God, I would like to say thank you. Thank you, God, for you just using all of us to encourage one another in this time of singleness, God. And I just ask you that you strengthen us, build us up where we're torn down, and definitely, God, keep us from the hands of the enemy. And, God, I just thank you again for who you are in our lives, being just supplying every one of our needs, being, you know, being there when we need you, God, and you're just, you're just God by yourself. And I thank you, thank you, God, for who you are. Continue to bless everyone that's on this prayer call. Help us to be watchful and prayerful. And in any relationship that we have, whether it's work relationships with our family, God, even, you know, in dating, God, and I just ask you right now in your son Jesus' name just to give us wisdom and understanding. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And let me Amen. take it back on behind you, too. Damn, it's all God. It's a wonderful time. I just even want to uh, give thanks and praise God, even for Sister Andrea, God, just uh, being led by you, God, even to ask God and mention this topic, God, and even just letting God use her, God, tonight, God. I know she struck a home run, God, and we know when we lean and depend on you, God, we will strike a home run. And, God, right now I pray, God, even as it mentions in Proverbs, he that waters shall himself be watered, God. And even as Sister Andrea has poured into the lives of singles, God, tonight, and even to those that will hear the recording, God, I pray that you water back into her life, God. I thank you for watering health, God. I thank you for watering prosperity, God. I, I thank you for rewarding peace, God, even unto her, God, even to the ministry that you have given her, God, even into her family, God, even to her job, God, everything that she touched right now, we thank you, God, for just uh, multiplying what she did tonight back into her life, God. We pray for every church that's represented on this call, God. We pray, God, that you just move mightily as you so tarry tomorrow. God, if you allow us to see tomorrow, God, let our services just be anointed. God, let them be uh, on fire. Let somebody get saved. Let somebody get filled with your spirit, God. God, we just thank you for a victorious, victorious, even weak right now, God, as you so tear, God. And we praise you for all these wonderful things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And if we can, you know I love to do this. Give God a 10-second hand clap of praise. Now, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you, God. My God. Thank my you, God. Lord. Have enjoyed you all tonight. Y'all have been way more of a blessing to me than than uh than I probably give in to you all. And I just thank you again, Sister Andrew, for letting God use you. I thank everyone for uh dialing in. Uh hope you all connect with us again, www.savingsingle.info. If you look on the Saving Single Facebook page, you can actually see um, well, tag uh, Sister Andrea here on the uh, on uh, tag. So if you're on Facebook, you can add her on the friend by going through the Save the Single Facebook page or whatnot. She's a definitely a cool, down to earth sister. Always been humble, um, just friendly. Uh, and she's gonna keep it real. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so praise God. So, uh, but anyway, thank you all so much for joining in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disconnect. Again, our next call is going to be February the 11th, so we look forward to you all joining us on the same call-in number, same time. And we just look forward to having a great time in Jesus' name. I pray you all have a wonderful night. I love you all, and God bless.